Okay, we're going to talk about sharpening today, and I'm going to start by running through the guide as a refresher because it can be a little confusing how to use the guide. So when you're sharpening a universal, you want the shank to line up with this center line right here, just like that. But when you're sharpening a Gracie, you don't go by the shank, you go by the handle color or the, not the color, but the number. So if this was an 1112, I'd hold it here and I'd make sure that the handle was angled this way like that. Or if it's in a 1314, do you see the number up at the top there? Then the handle's gonna go like that. If it's a one two, I'm gonna hold the handle out here a little bit when I sharpen. Or if it's an 1112, this side or this side, depending on which edge I'm sharpening or which end I'm sharpening. But a universal doesn't go by these big sections of color like a Gracie does. A universal, you just line up the shank at 12 o'clock with this line that says universal on it. And I'm gonna start by showing you how to sharpen a universal. And one thing that I don't think people always understand is how important it is to get really steady on a surface when you sharpen. Because if you're up in the air, you're gonna do little wobblies and it's gonna change the angle and you don't even think you're doing it. So you wanna get really solid. Another thing I see is students wanna be really, really precise with the angles. So they get up here like this and then they're ripping up their guide. I see their guide gets ripped up over time and they can't get the freedom and the friction they need. So you need to come away from the guide a little bit. So come away from the guide, get yourself really sturdy on this surface. Okay, and then you are going to want to, okay, the shank's at 12 o'clock. Now drop the blade a little bit so that it's nice and parallel and you need to be straight. Your body needs to be straight. The other thing I see students do is, okay, they line up their instrument, but they're sitting off to the side and that throws angles. You've gotta be right in front of the guide so that the toe is pointing right towards your stomach and you're square, you're facing the guide, everything's right, okay, great. Now we're ready to sharpen. I think most of you have been taught to hold the stone like this. And so where, where the shank is lined up with the middle line here, the stone I line up, depending on what side of the blade I'm sharpening, with these other lines here that say stone or stone. So here's the stone line there for this side of the blade. And there's the stone line for the other side of the blade. And, um, but again, you wanna come away a little bit. So just get it as good as you can with eyeballing it and then just keep it there. I hold the stone a little bit different after doing this for 20 years. It's hard for me to change my habit, but you can do the same things I'm showing you holding it the way that you've been taught. When you start sharpening any curette, I don't care if it's a universal or a Gracie, you wanna make sure that you're starting back a little ways where um, the shank meets the blade. So don't start exactly on the blade because you're gonna get an hourglass looking blade. You wanna start where the shank is a little bit, where the shank meets the blade so that it blends as it gets smaller over time. So now you can see my um, terminal shank is lined up at 12 o'clock. My stone is in line with the stone angle here. Okay, and then I'm starting back here and I'm just gonna go ahead. If it's really dull, you're gonna to have to add a little pressure. I know the books a lot of times say light pressure, but once your instrument gets dull, if you don't give it some pressure, it's never gonna get sharp. So let's say this instrument is pretty dull. You're gonna start back here and you're just going to push, push. And I'm trying to hold the instrument straight because if that bounces too much, you're gonna throw your angle off. And it's really important as you're sharpening not to go like this and use your wrist. You've got to use your entire arm like you're a machine, like a robot, because you're using your wrist, it's going to throw that angle off and you don't know you're doing it. So back here, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen that section. I'm going to divide it into sections. I'm starting where the shank meets the blade. I'm always sharpening there. 
first. Now I'm gonna come to the back third, or the chain third, heel third, that's what you call it, and I'm going to linger. I'm pushing and I'm just hanging out. People wanna go too quick and think it's gonna get sharp right away, but if it's really dull, you have to linger. Now I'm gonna go to the middle third and notice I'm really careful not to turn the stone. As a matter of fact, sometimes I almost point it the other way just a little bit. If I know I'm really secure on that part that I wanna be um, sharpening. So now I'm on the middle third. I'm keeping it really straight with that stone line. Notice I'm not touching the guide. I'm lingering. And now when I get to the toe third, this is the part where you have to be real careful not to sickle it. So I am going to do this toe third. Sometimes because we use the toe third so much, I think it does tend to wear or else we sharpen by mistake just a little more and it ends up a little smaller than the rest of the blade. But you don't want to turn it. You have to be super careful. So what you're doing when you're on the toe third is you're just trying to keep it where it was, but if you can see that it's not quite lining up, turn it just enough to where it matches, not overturning it. So now I'm on the toe third and I lighten up instinctively, even when it's pretty dull. I'm just more careful here because I don't want to sharpen it, but you can see that I, I'm really trying not to go this way. Okay, so I'm a little, I start out a little lighter, make sure my angle's good. And hang out. So I've sharpened where the shank meets the blade, the heel third, the middle third, the toe third, but I'm still not done. Well, you're not. I'm close to being done. I might test it at this point, but there's still some finishing touches you want to do the test stick. <laughs> Did anybody bring the test stick over? <laughs> Let me go. Okay. Here. I did not. Here's a good up close look at the sharpening guide. There's ways to sync the two of them together. Maybe some tech savvy student can do it for us. Or someone can do it for us. I'm still running. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, which I can't remember which end I was sharpening. I think it was right here. Okay, so. <laughs> I think I need um, some water for this type too. Okay, so see how I hold the stick. See, testing is just as important, your technique with testing as it is with sharpening, because if you can't test right, you're not gonna know when you're sharp or not. And you're not gonna pass those competencies in the fall. So I hold the, the stick really firmly, and do you see how I'm holding it like a modified pin grasp? So I can fulcrum on my other hand and now I can change the angle and do what I want just like as if I was pivoting in the mouth. And so now you're always going to do this when you test every single time until maybe the very end when you're doing finishing touches, but you're always gonna go heel third, middle third, toe third, and I do corner because that's the part where you roll the toe and that's the part where students leave it not sharp is right at the very end. So I always double check just a little bit right here, but that's me. But watch me test. So here is a universal. You want it to be the same angle as if you would scale a tooth. Same with the Gracie, but with the universal, the angle that you're going to scale a tooth, it's not 90 degrees. So here's 90 degrees. I'm at a right angle to the stick. I need to tilt it in just a little bit to make it 60 to 80 the biting angle, and then I'm going to go straight in and pop it. And that is not even close to being sharp. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> Are you sure that this one can be sharpened? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I need a, I could tell I need a little bit of um, like water or something with this. Well, I can get you some water. Okay. You want it. Do you want it in a, a little dish a little, maybe? A cup or something. A cup. Like this or something bigger? Uh, it's like a tall cup, I can dunk it. Cup. Yeah. It could be an oil stone. I'm, I'm going to use your... That 